Oh wow, hey, you guys made it. Welcome to my online seance. You know, to be completely honest, I'm a little surprised that you guys showed up because there is an extremely high probability that we're all gonna be brutally slain by ghosts. Pretty sure I mentioned that. Well, too late to turn back now anyway. But as long as we follow the rules and know what we're doing, I think we're gonna be just fine. Come on, you trust old found flicks, right? So without further ado, let the ritual begin. Oh, dang it. Now I'm remembering what the lady said. It was rule number one, never let your candle burn out. So yeah, we're definitely dead now. Oh, criminies. Did you guys hear that? I think it was coming from over there. I remember one more thing the lady said. She said, if you do encounter a spirit, make sure that you treat it as your best friend. So that's what I'm going to try. Hello, are there any ghosts here? I would like to invite you to my birthday party because we are best friends. Hello? Oh God, no! Ugh. Well, that didn't work. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Found Flicks, where we've been trapped in lockdown for what feels like forever. At least in the US, which is appropriate considering today's explained video on host, presented via a Zoom meeting following six friends who accidentally invite the attention of a demonic presence during an online seance and begin noticing strange occurrences in their homes. This was a huge hit when it came out on Shutter a few weeks back, and I think a big reason is its quarantine-based setting, in addition to some pretty impressive of scares and special effects in the later half. I really have to give the filmmakers credit because Host was produced entirely during lockdown this year, with the actors doing their own stunts and the director usually in his dressing gown. They were given a short couple of weeks turnaround time to entirely construct the movie from scratch, and what they put together is especially impressive considering these difficult and limited shooting situations, all occurring via web camera perspective. This feels like found footage, but is in fact part of a brand new sub genre, something we've talked about on the channel before. It's not technically found footage, but a subgenre of that called screen life. The key difference being characters operating cameras versus everything presented live via their webcams. The dude behind Unfriended and Searching knows this all too well. And The Den is another notable example. So while Host doesn't exactly feel that inventive, it still does this style quite well. And again provides some good scare moments. But where it fell short for me is that it was literally too short. The movie clocks in at 55 minutes in its entirety, and while a nice brisk watch, it still feels too short to really make a lasting impact. The thing is, there's tons of stuff to the story that just doesn't get developed, and it could have easily been stretched out into 90 minutes. And at less than 60, there's just a ton of stuff that ends up feeling underdeveloped. The extremely abrupt ending doesn't help in that regard either. But still, I don't know, maybe they'll do a sequel or something. Could be. So let's attend the Zoom meeting from hell and host, breaking down the group of friends seance gone wrong, along with looking at some aspects to the story's many lingering questions, as well as just what is the spirit that they summon and how did it come to be? Hilariously, before the movie even officially starts and the studio's logos are flashing by, I have to point out one that I noticed. Boo Earns! Boo Earns! If you're like found flicks, what the hell are you on about? This is a pretty classic Simpsons reference. I was shouting Boo Earns! Poor Hans Mulman. At least he's making movies now. Good for him after that infamous football and the groin incident. Our Zoom meeting starts off innocuously enough, with Haley going through setting up a personal meeting room and inviting her pals. Already, she hears an odd thud in her apartment, and Curious goes to investigate, hearing more thuds. She calls out hello, and the closet door bursts open on its own, sending an ironing board tumbling out, followed by another thud coming from the main room, which is just her neighbor, Gemma, asking to be let in. But what about out the closet. That's not normal. And it seems as though there is already something lingering in Haley's apartment, which we get a possible reason for in a second. The two discuss what they're going to do, and Gemma hasn't done anything like this before, while Haley has a few times, relaying that at least something has happened every time. This could be why there already is something at her apartment. She's done these seances before, and most likely something that she reached out to didn't fully ever leave her home. While they wait for the others, Gemma busy 
busies herself firing off an email. Thanks for this riveting moment in cinema. Soon after, Emma joins the room, admitting that she's nervous, followed by Radina, who starts coughing. Everyone joking how you can't cough anymore. Dang Corona. Oh boy. We see her boyfriend chopping in the background, with Caroline being the last to join in. Seen with her dad, who isn't doing so well with lockdown restrictions. Caroline having to keep bringing him back from outside, saying he likes the sunshine, awkwardly showing off his old man body, causing the girls to giggle and call him a flirt. Adam's chopping turns more aggressive, like he's gonna chop through the world, which catches Redina's attention, leaving the girls for a moment, who discuss their odd situation, that they haven't been together that long and made the rash and poor decision of moving in together due to lockdown, and things haven't exactly been smooth sailing. But she says it's okay, if they get into an argument, he just goes into the other room, leaving this whole area just for her. Ah, healthy way to deal with conflict when you can't actually go anywhere. Emma shows off a face filter that's pretty spooky, and then another weird pig one, all the girls groaning in response. They bring up that another friend of theirs, Teddy, will be joining the group as well, asking if they've seen his recent post with his new flame, Jenny, making fun of how all of his posts have her in them now, and that he has changed due to their relationship, dubbing her a big fake that lives in her parents' mansion. Jeez, don't hold back, girls. Right on cue, he appears with Jenny hanging poolside. The others all jealous and annoyed when he gives her a kiss heading inside. They rip on him for his new man bun, which he jokingly refers to as a twat knot, uh, UK slang, and does a little tour of the digs, focusing on a creepy clown marionette. The others taken aback by the absolutely massive bar behind him. Well, I gotta admit, that's a pretty sweet setup for lockdown, but according to him, it's actually quite difficult being here with Jenny's parents, not wanting to get shit faced every day in front of them, and even worse, he can't even watch porn in the living room. These bastards, how unreasonable. Asking if he has his personal item, Teddy admits that he broke quarantine to get it from his place, dramatically revealing with a vape cloud a music box that belonged to his grandmother, which he hates. As children, his brother would use it to spook him, leaving it all around the house. The music still, to this day, giving him the chilly willies, the girls agreeing it's quite creepy. Caroline is already getting too afraid and doesn't want to follow through with their seance, but Haley assures her that her guide has done this a bunch, saying that she's a friend of hers, and getting real, asks the others to please take the process seriously and be respectful. Yeah, we'll see about that. Immediately, Teddy, saying he's not trying to be disrespectful, but obviously is, suggests they take a shot every time the astro plane is mentioned, getting corrected astral plane. But everyone agrees in good fun to take a shot together, toasting to happy spookies as Emma suggests. Haley gets a text from the woman, Gemma jokingly asking if she used telepathy, and unamused Haley saying, no, it's a regular text. That would have been cool, telepathic texting. Hopefully we'll get that soon. Get on it, Elon, you're almost there. They already are not taking it seriously. Hopefully that won't be a problem. Haley relays that she's in the waiting room, Caroline giving one last urging of not doing this, offering to play a board game instead. Too late now, Haley lets the woman Salen into the meeting room with the others. She confesses that she's never done a seance before on Zoom and that this will be new for all of them. She asks if they brought their trigger objects, which they show off, but frustratingly we get no further details on anyone's minus Teddy's music box. Jimma has a pretty serious question. What if she wants to speak to her Chinese speaking grandparents? Would she be able to communicate with them as she doesn't speak the language? Salen says that's not an issue as there is no language on the astral plane. Everyone half-heartedly trying to hide taking another shot. Emma asks, well, what about a pet? And same thing applies so you can talk to your pooch in the afterlife. No language barrier of any kind. Salen instructs them to light their candles, to act as a beacon for the spirit spirit to come towards. She asks them to look out for a response from the spirit and to picture a name, face, or image in your mind. They could also communicate physically, such as a knocking or causing a candlelight to flicker, or perhaps even a touch or pressure that you feel on your body. Teddy interrupts asking, what was that plane again? All oh, taken another shot. Salen continues that they are slightly less protected doing this via Zoom, reiterating the importance of respecting the spirits as well as each other, and asks if anyone is feeling worse or vulnerable, both Caroline and Emma raising their hands. She relays a way to assuage their fears, asking them to visualize them holding hands in a circle and then breaking the circle. She then asks them to visualize a cord around their waist to the front door and then cutting that cord to sever their connection to the spirit realm, something they can do just in case things were to go awry. This would supposedly save them from the spirits. She puts on some weird tones to help join the vibrations of the spirit realm, asking them to close their eyes and visualize their circle. Just as things are getting going, Jenny comes storming 
in on Teddy's cam, giggling and goofing around. She accidentally blows out his candle, laughing and annoying the girls. Jenny's saying that they have to go and they abruptly hang up, the girls bemoaning him as a knob sack. Ah, another lovely British slang there. Salen keeps them on track and focus, saying it's okay, and reveals that spirits can communicate via the internet. Of course they can, mentioning the possibility of them being possessed, spooking Caroline. But she clarifies this just means the spirit is communicating through them. Nothing to worry about, it's just getting possessed. Come on, Caroline, get with the program. Salen asks them to again imagine the circle, all together in one room, and then they join hands with each other. She invites the spirits to pass on any communication they might have, asking if anyone is there to come forward, getting the others to repeat the question in unison. Nothing happens, Salen asking if anything is coming to their minds or if they're hearing any sounds. The group silently listens intently. She notices a strange light on Radina's screen, but it's just a false alarm, some kind of reflection and nothing supernatural. Then they hear an ominous thud, everyone acknowledging that they all heard it. She asks the spirit to give a sign and knock again, this time getting two knocks in response. But it's another fake out. Salen apologizes, realizing that it's just her dinner delivery, the girls goofing around about her possibly frightening order of Thai food. They wonder if she's coming back, her camera now just an empty space, seeing her creepy basement or whatever, Emma agreeing her house is pretty creepy looking in the dark. She comes back, profusely sorry for the interruption as her meal was supposed to show up before their meeting. Getting them to refocus, she asks if they're getting a name or anything, and Haley chimes in that she felt a hand on her shoulder. Then Gemma jumps to her feet, looking afraid, and freaks out that something touched her neck, describing the pressure on it as almost unbearable. Salen suggests that they call out to them, and she asks if anyone is there. She starts getting teary-eyed, saying the name Jack is coming to mind, Salen asking if she knew anyone with that name that passed. She sighs yes, a kid from her school that was nice to her one time, who tragically hanged himself, she cries. Salen is just about to say something, but is quickly stopped by a bunch of stuff toppling over behind her and the connection is lost. I went through this part freeze frame, I'm like, what is that coming at her or whatever? It's just some boxes, it's not like a spirit or something evil, but still the sign the spirit is there. Haley asks if Jimma is okay, and when she pulls her hands away, reveals a big shit-eating grin. She divulges that she was just joking. Dang, pretty good acting there, Jimma. And once again, they aren't taking this whole thing seriously, which they were repeatedly told to do. Hmm, probably isn't a big deal though. I don't think it'll matter. What do you guys think? Who am I asking? There's no one else in the room. Emma calls her a psychopath and is annoyed because she believed her. Gemma cackling in response. Haley can't get a hold of her, excusing herself for a bathroom break, which all the girls take advantage of, leaving us with empty shots for several moments. Really gotta pad this thing out even to get to 55 minutes, huh? But you know what, on second thought, that is a pretty good idea. Be right back, everybody. Time to take a big old ghost pee. Soon the girls return, and Gemma is still kind of goofing around, pretending she's sensing some tension, and a name comes to mind, Haley, who isn't paying attention, fiddling on her phone, and gets irritated, yelling for her to fuck off, upset that she isn't taking this seriously like she asked. Everyone's starting to talk all over each other at once. Out of nowhere, Haley's chair is dragged clear across the room, her thinking that something must be there. The others think she's just messing around, but she seems serious, saying they have to keep going. They are connected to something, and have to talk to it to find out more. She asks them to be quiet and listen, hearing rattling sounds behind her, hearing only white noise as they crank up the game. Haley grabs her laptop, venturing to the back hall, hearing creaking sounds while she peers around the darkness. She checks her closet again, the other girls looking on edge and frightened. She slowly opens the back door, and just before entering, hears another loud bang. But shockingly, it's not at her house. Caroline turns back, realizing it was there, the others urging her to check it out. She had Wittingly does so, climbing down the stairs and yelling for her dad, hearing another loud thud coming from the attic. She puts the camera down to angle up towards it, but first goes to her dresser, rummaging through her stuff for a selfie stick. She takes a long pause at the bottom of the ladder, the others assuring her it's gonna be okay and to keep going as she hesitatingly mounts the steps. She peers around the dark space, seeing nothing out of the ordinary at first, what looks like boxes of Christmas decorations and stuff, what the heck else is gonna be in your attic, until she keeps panning, catching a glimpse of a hanging body, but when quickly panning back, it's gone, sending her hightailing it back downstairs. Gemma is certain that she saw something too, asking Haley to try and reach Salem, while she's distracted by something in her apartment, frantically asking the others if they can see that, but they can't see what she's talking about, her going back to her room. She gasps and runs away, saying, 
it looked at her. She retrieves her Polaroid camera and snaps a shot, waving it to get it to develop more quickly, which you're actually not supposed to do. It messes with the process, but that's okay. When it develops, we see a body hanging there ominously. Suddenly, Emma's glass bursts, and Haley gets a hold of Salen, apologizing that her internet suddenly isn't working. Haley tells her that they've had some interesting experiences, and they are hoping that she can help talk them through them. Salen saying it was good that they had an experience. Again, isn't that the whole point? Telling the girls to keep calm, as it's probably just someone trying to pass on a message. She brings up Jack that Gemma mentioned earlier, but they have to tell her that she made the whole thing up. Salen gravely states that they shouldn't disrespect spirits, and it's not good to summon someone that doesn't exist, as it can summon a false spirit. If you make someone up, you can actually create them, getting them to kind of thinking of it like creating a mask. Now anything can come through and wear that mask. Offhandedly mentioning if they're lucky, it's just another spirit. A crying Caroline asking, well, what if it's not? She stammers, it could be something demonic. Basically, Gemma sent out an open invitation, which they need to shut down immediately. She starts to guide them through cutting their imaginary ropes. First, thanking the spirits. Thanks, spirits, appreciate you. Calling out one knock for yes and two for no. All asking if they have a message for them. Haley's light turns itself on and they try another question, asking if they are a friend in unison. Loud electrical warbling occurs at Haley's and they lose Salen. Caroline now freaking and yowling to call her back. Haley says that they have to do the rope thing themselves, telling the spirit sorry, getting the others to repeat after her, going through the rope to the door and then asking them to imagine that they're all cutting it. She calls out again if anyone is there, asking them to open their eyes and blow out their candles. Hopefully this will break the circle. And it appears that things are calm now, everyone getting a little emotional, but Haley smiles, calling it exciting. Caroline complaining of being hot and sweaty after this experience, while a shaken Emma vows to never do this again. Redina goes for a panic wee, bringing the computer along as she doesn't want to be alone after that, and they ask Caroline if she's okay, huffing that she won't be able to sleep tonight. Redina checks in on her boyfriend in the bedroom, but he's not there, weirdly. She tries to call his cell phone, asking the others if anyone saw him leaving, and confusingly see that he's left his cell phone. Thinking nothing of it, the girls start to say their goodbyes to the group, despite Haley asking them to wait for Redina to get back, and notice that Caroline's room is now mysteriously empty as well. She enters, everyone momentarily relieved, but then they realize it's a Zoom background that she created for goofs, and it's not actually her. Haley tries to call her, briefly flashing to Caroline's face smashing into the lens. Well, looks like that whole cutting the rope thing didn't work at all, and the girls have accidentally released a demonic spirit into their homes thanks to their internet seance. Emma gets to learn this herself in a quite unsettling encounter with a floating mask hanging there in her room. She gets carefully closer, reaching out a hand, hearing dissonant tones that sound like that interference between a phone and speakers. If you've heard it, you know the exact one I'm talking about. And this particular noise pops up at various points to clue us in to the spirit making his presence known. The mask turns, startling Emma back, and when panning back, it's disappeared. But the threat is definitely real. And as Salen suggested, Gemma created this mask of sorts with her story. And in that way, this is the form the spirit took of the hang jack from her story. Thanks to tapping into the other side, it has become real. Emma lays down some flour on the floor, assuming it's gone, but hears more of those interrupting tones, and her cabinet doors start opening themselves, the others yelling for her to get out of there. She shakily backs away, and more footprints appear coming towards her. The light bulb shatters, and she's lifted into the air and drops several feet. To me, it seems like at this point, the spirit is just kind of messing with the girls and proving that they don't know what they're dealing with. While Emma is certainly rattled, and everything made a bit sillier by her filter thing accidentally coming on, she is okay at least, for now. The spirit turns to a distracted Redina on the phone, her not noticing the oven kicking on behind her. Everyone is like, oh yeah, let's get the hell out of our houses. When Redina finally notices the girl's pleas, she's annoyed, and Alan's dead body drops down to her shock. She rushes to the door, it closes on her, and she's dragged back, hearing a loud thud and the camera stops, blood splattered on the lens. Redina! Redetta, more like, <laughs> what? Focusing on Caroline, we see her ultimate fate, her repeatedly bashing her face on the lens, getting bloodied and groaning for help. Then tauntingly, everything cuts back to her background loop, the remaining girls terrified and sobbing. Haley hopelessly attempts to call Salen. Jim is screaming this is all her fault. She yells back that it's her fault. I'd say they both are kind of at fault in my opinion. Yes, it was Jimma that lied and created the form the evil spirit took, but none of them took it seriously, that being the whole problem. 
problem. Alternatively, Haley seems a little suspicious here as she's done these before and considered Salen a friend and even said that, yeah, some wild spooky stuff happens. What did she encounter before? Anyway, my point being, they're both kind of to blame to me because Haley didn't really express what she was getting her friends into. The things boredom in lockdown turns us to, internet seances. What a time to be alive. Her chair erratically moves and she's dragged across the floor, the door slamming behind her. Emma absolutely losing it now under her security blanket. Gemma brazenly, or perhaps pointlessly, decides to take action and masks up to go to Haley's nearby apartment to check in on her. Gemma's connection eventually cuts out on the street, leaving poor Emma all by herself, just as old Teddy decides to make a late reappearance, starting with a puppet show featuring his favorite clown marionette and cackles taking a seat saying sorry it took so long, completely oblivious to all the supernatural madness that has consumed these people's past 35 minutes or so. Emma cries for him to get out of the house, but he doesn't understand, thinking it's a joke, goading the others into coming out of hiding. Suddenly the lights shut out, and well, guess you get to see how real it is. Aren't you glad you came back, Teddy? Good choice. He's still playing it cool, playing off that the power goes off all the time and he just needs to find the box thingy to fix it. Casually going up the stairs, he's confronted by the demon guy and flips, fleeing through the house while stuff flies off all around him, knocking him to the ground. He again sees the spirit and makes his way outside, seeing Jenny out there by the pool having a cig. She's whisked into the air, a force snapping her neck and then dropping her lifelessly into the pool. Emma again helplessly watching this all play out. He makes it to the woods, hiding behind a stack of logs. Hearing more thuds, he peeks out, whispering he thinks it's here. Ah, <laughs> yeah, geez, guy pretty slow on the uptake, huh? In the barn, a noose is hanging from the rafters waiting for him. The flashlight bulb pops, and Teddy flicks on his zippo, finding the music box waiting there on the ground. He gets dragged out and loses consciousness, seeing flames starting to dance up his body. Emma yells at him to wake up, frantically pounding on her screen. But once the flames reach his face, he's jolted awake, screaming bloody murder as his camera goes dead. Poor Emma left all alone again, and having to watch all of her friends get brutally slain, knowing full well that her time must be coming soon. Right now, in fact, since there's not too many people left, sorry Emma, hearing a thud, she gets up, the door to the room flinging open. She grabs her blanket and tosses it, landing in the figure of a shape standing right in front of her. She opens the window and carelessly crashes into a table down below, killing her on impact. Well, just two ladies left, let's hope they fare better than the others. Gemma breaks a window to get into Haley's, rushing to the computer and seeing Emma dead along with the others, each checking out of the meeting one by one. Before barely even getting her bearings, the spirit bonks her on the head with a vase. She knocks the laptop to the ground, whimpering on the floor. The cabinets start bursting open, spilling their contents, and the same chair starts to wobble as she goes to search the rest of the apartment. First try in the closet, she too is spooked by the terrifying ironing board, drawn further back by more thuds. A chair flings out from under the desk and it's Haley hiding underneath, the two giving each other corona-appropriate elbow bumps in celebration. Turning back to the main room, the chair scooches and the lights all flick off. Jimma whispering that they need to leave. Good thinking, lady. Well, let's hang out for a while. What do you say? Haley grabs her Polaroid and snaps off a photo, Jimma asking if she's seeing anything. She takes another, both uneasily moving forward in the dark. Another snap. Nothing. The two tiptoeing forward. And another. Jeez, these things are expensive. You need to save the film, Haley. Now total darkness fills the frame in front of them. She takes another snap, catching a glimpse of Jack's demonic visage. And the meeting abruptly cuts off. A jarring, but still perhaps appropriate note to end on. Certainly the implication is that our final two survivors meet similar fates of their pals, even if we don't see the outcome. As far as the spirit, it, as Salen offered, was able to communicate through digital means. So everyone in the meeting was destined to die. At least the meeting is over now, and that most likely means the door to the spirit world is closed as well. And maybe it doesn't actually end things, but this makes sense considering the whole circle thing that Salen was trying to get them to do. Everyone that was part of the original seance is now dead, so that's the end of it. Makes sense to me, at least. As far as the concept behind the spirit that they summoned, it's essentially created by their groupthink. By all imagining the same idea from Jimma's story in their head, they can make something manifest via this shared imagining. Since they were all tuned in to the seance when Jimma told the story, this character is created in each of their thoughts. That's how they created Jack, who seems to enjoy hanging, and there are several peaks of dangling bodies up to the reveal with Teddy when we see the full guy there. There's a few more details provided by the director Rob Savage on that actual in-shot and its physical appearance that I honestly didn't pick up on, that we actually see the spirit is starting to transform into something more demonic, essentially doing away with the Jack facade. And as Savage says, they hadn't cut at that moment, we might have seen a bit more of what this demon actually looks like. I'm like, ooh, that sounds interesting. Too bad we didn't actually have that in the movie because it sounds 
kind of cool. It all kind of comes back to my initial problem with the movie. There's just all kinds of stuff with the story and everything that feels underdeveloped, the characters, what's Haley's motivation, and so much of this stuff that would have been really easy to expand upon. And even this thing with the demon thing and at the end, I mean, they had the whole idea. Why not just go through with everything? Maybe the idea is to continue into a sequel. And I could see them doing that, especially considering its success. Also, thanks to the success of Host, the filmmakers have landed a deal for a new feature film with horror legend Sam Raimi producing. And I have faith that these guys with a bigger budget and scope could make something really interesting. Uh, I guess we'll just have to keep waiting in our homes until we're allowed to ever leave. Like that's ever gonna happen. Uh... What did you guys think of Host and its ending? What would you like to see further explored in a potential sequel? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Thanks for watching Found Flicks. See you next time.